Let me, wait, is there a camera on me? Oh, yes. I would like to introduce a lady who is uh, one of the incomparable ladies in the American theater. There have been cults about Ruth Gordon for uh, years and years and years. Uh, when great performances on Broadway are discussed, Lorette Taylor in The Glass Menagerie or uh, Mildred Danik in Death of a Salesman or Vivian Lee uh, or uh, any of the classics that are referred to, Olivier and Oedipus, Ruth Gordon in The Matchmaker is always brought up as one of the masterpieces of all time. And she has been a wondrous presence in the theater for over 50 years. A splendid comedian and a splendid comic writer. She's written movies for Hepburn and Tracy, and she's won an Oscar in Rosemary's Baby. And uh, will you welcome, please, the astonishing Ruth Gordon. How are you? I'm wonderful, and um, I, I have to thank you for inviting me to come on tonight. You know, you've all been having a glorious time, having wonderful laughs, and I've been listening to it. And to me, this is going to slow things up a little. I'm, I'm sorry, but you've got to put up with it. <laughs> this is a very deep emotional experience to me coming on tonight because Dick was right. I've, I've been in show business, he said, 50 years. I'm, I hope I don't cry because it's, it really is moving. I've, I've been in show business for 54 years, and this time of year, any of you who are actors, who know what job hunting means, August, September, we're in there saying, any casting today, anything doing, anything going on, and I've done that for 54 August, 54 September, since 1915, and Sorry that this show is closing because it's given me great pleasure and many other people. But the last night lets me start my 54th season in show business. Thank you. All. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sure. Sure. And, and here's another terrific thing. I'm only engaged for one night, obviously, tonight. This is, you know, I open and close tonight. You've had a lovely season, but this is one night. That's all right. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't show any progress. But on the other hand... <laughs> no, on the other hand, I'm not slipping because in August 1915, the first job that I ever got, the first money I ever earned, was for one day only. And I got paid $5 being in a movie over in Fort Lee, New Jersey. And for the day's work, I got $5. And now for this night's work, well, never mind. But at least, <laughs> I guess $5 uh, in 1915 would probably be about 250 or something now, wouldn't you think so? But the only thing that really does show progress is how I got to New York. You see, the means of travel. When I left... Wallaston, Massachusetts. I went down to the railroad station, got on the train to go to Boston. And that took about 20 minutes. Then I changed trains in Boston. Now I'm just coming to New York, mind you. And I took a train to Fall River, Massachusetts that took two hours. That landed us at the dock in Fall River and I got into a cabin, got undressed, and before I went to bed, I got down and prayed that when we went round Point Judith in the boat, it didn't rock so much, we'd all get seasick and not look nice in New York the next day. And the next morning, early in the morning, I got to New York and started to tackle show business. Well, the difference is, the progress is... <laughs> last Sunday, last Sunday, I left International Airport in Los Angeles. And I got to Kennedy at about five hours after that. Nice way to spend Sunday afternoon, and it was a lovely trip. But I'm telling you, that's really progress. But on the Fall River line, there was a lot more action than there was in the You were afraid you wouldn't have anything to say. When, you, when I wanted 
you'd have come on a long time ago. You said, I never have anything. I always bomb on those shows, you said. No, no, you I never could have said that because I never went on a show until last year. Right, and I, always, I do have a lot to say, but yeah. I sometimes say it in other departments, you know, like writing or on the stage or in films. Mm -hmm. Gee, why do, why do you want to work so hard now? You, you've, you're a great star. You've been around all this time. And you could be relaxing now. And no, I'm not a great star. I, I uh, am being starred, thank God, at the moment, because that's my dream, to be a movie actress. I am a stage actress, you know. But I've always wanted to be a film actress. And uh, in, at last, in, in these later years, I've gotten into the films. And last, uh, two years ago, I was in Rosemary's Baby. And, uh, oh, that was a wonderful film. Oh, it was really wonderful. And, of course, I didn't play Rosemary. I played the neighbor that, you know, jinxed her. But in this picture, whatever happened to Aunt Alice, I play Aunt Alice. And this, this is progress, you see. But I got a letter the other day. Oh, it's fascinating, you know, how, how times change. Because I wrote letters to actresses. And I always wrote them, and I said, oh, you're so wonderful. Oh, I love you so. Would you send me the picture? That's all I said. But I got a letter the other day, and it said many flattering things. And then it went on, and it said, uh, in Rosemary's Baby, I wanted to kill you. In Whatever Happened to Aunt Alice, I wanted to kill Geraldine Page. Now, that's good because, you see, she murdered me. She murders me in Whatever Happened to Aunt Alice. So they wanted to kill her and let me go on and live. <laughs> I hope they win. No, no, they right. won't win. Gee, it's nice to see. Now, listen, you, you have known, I guess, just about everybody there is that it would be enviable to know over the past, uh, whatever those number of years you. were that you said. Well, of course, climaxing in me. Yeah. Yeah. But yes. uh, when I think about it, I mean, uh, Thornton Wilder and George S. Kaufman and Alexander yeah. Wolcott and all those people. I say a thing about Thornton Wilder because, you know, we were... We... I think you may. Thank you. Because, you see, now... Uh, I'm, I'm not much on television, but I'm very interested in it, and I'd like to be on it. And I notice a lot of times when people say the commercials, they kind of step aside from it. You know, Santa Flush, they don't seem to enjoy saying that. Mm -hmm. But you know what Mr. Thornton Wilder says? He says there's nothing more dignified than making money. Now, that's a very intellectual man. Nothing more dignified than making money. Now... You see, when we talk about Santa Flush, when we talk about the different things, that's passing on a nice hint to the neighbors all over the world. They're doing something better in their household. They're enjoying themselves more because we mentioned it. And we are earning money and behaving in a very dignified way. So that's, that's for Thornton Wilder. He, I, I have heard your husband say that Thornton Wilder is maybe the best conversationalist alive today. And I, I heard him talk one night, and he, can, he starts sentences that, like, um, uh, I was watching a parade once with Sigmund Freud. And, you know, it's incredible to think of, of that. And, and you've known him, and you've known Somerset Maugham. Yes, Very and well. that's a, a good thing to think about because, uh, you know, I come from a way back. And my mother gave me certain rules and precepts, and she said, uh, you know, naturally, don't speak to any strangers. And uh, women worse than men, and never speak to anybody that you don't really know. Well, Thornton Wilder has been one of the great influences in my life, and most wonderful, extraordinary help to me in my career. And how I knew Thornton Wilder is, I picked him up in front of the Booth Theater. <laughs> So there's no such thing as a generation gap. I knew my mother was wrong way back in 1915. <laughs> I see. Uh, what kind of neighbor was Catherine Hepburn? You have, uh, she lives next door to you. Yes, splendid, yeah, yeah. splendid neighbor. Ever come over and borrow a cup of anything? Or? Uh, no, she yeah. doesn't. She's, a, she, she's a, right in the air this minute flying to New York. Gee. Yeah, to do Coco, a musical oh, the, comedy. Oh, the music, yes. a musical. Yes. Yeah.